In the previous video, we talked about the reference frame and the observer who sits at the origin. So let's now define what is motion and what is rest. So when do we call an object in motion? The definition of motion then comes to be that if the position of an object changes with respect to an origin, if the position of an object changes with respect to the origin, origin is the place from where the observer is looking and with respect to time it is in motion. So remember how we discussed that for motion we need an observer therefore the definition contains the statement that the position of the object should change with respect to the origin and with respect to the time so that we can say that it is moving then the object is said to be in motion and if it does not happen so that is the position does not change then the object is said to be at rest okay so in order to define motion we need some variables so what are those variables that will help us define motion we need the distance and displacement then we need speed and velocity and finally we need acceleration these five variables along with time will help us define and study the properties of motion so let's take a look at distance and displacement now, definitions in physics are a little different from the uh, normal uses of the terms so you have to be careful what is the definition of distance so physics defines distance as the length of the path it is important the length of the path traveled by the object So, if we have two points, let's call them A and B, and I'll draw them here, and let's say that this length is 10 meter, and I ask you that what is the distance between A and B, do not say it is 10 meter, no. The first question when answering the distance between two points is you ask about the path what is the path traveled so if I ask you what is the distance between A and B you ask me what path am I following and then you give the answer to the distance a distance always means how much have you traveled the answer to this question gives us the distance so for example if we have two points let's call them a and b and i have a person who is moving on this path like that and let's call this is 10 meter uh, then for this path distance will be equal to 10 meter and if someone else is moving on a different path let's say this route curved one and the length of this route is for our example let's call it 15 meter then the distance for this second path will be equal to 15 meter notice how between same two points distance can be different can be different What this means is you must always ask about the path when calculating the distance. There is a point A here and a point B here and a point C here. Let's say person moves from A to B 
along this line and the distance traveled is 10 meter and then he takes this curved path to C and the distance traveled is 15 meter. So what is the total distance traveled by the person? So what you do to calculate the total distance is that you add up all the distances traveled. So total distance will be equal to 10 plus 15 meter and that comes out to be 25 meter and by the way the SI unit of distance is meter. So while adding these two distances we were not concerned about the direction. Direction is not important in distance and so distance is a scalar quantity. So these are the important points about distance. Now let's look at displacement. What is displacement? How is it defined? In physics we call displacement as the uh, shortest distance shortest distance between two points now what this means is if we have two points A and B and a lot of paths joining them one like that and let's take another path from the bottom here and then let's take another path straight from A to B. Then what is displacement? It is the shortest distance between two points and that will be a straight line. So the direction in displacement is fixed and therefore displacement between two points is always same no matter which path you follow. So displacement does not depend on path. And if I now ask you the displacement between A and B, so regardless of the path that I take, all three paths have the same displacement and that is 10 meter. So if I ask you what is the distance between a and A, your answer should be, I don't know, can't tell until you tell me the path. But what is the displacement between A and A, then your answer should be 0 because the initial and final points are same. So displacement depends only on the initial and final points whereas the distance depends on the path traveled. So finally, let's take a look at the differences between distance and displacement. Distance and on the other side, we will have displacement. The first point of difference is it depends on path whereas displacement does not depend on path. The second point of difference is distance is a scalar quantity whereas displacement has a direction so it is a vector quantity. The third point of difference between distance and displacement is that distance always increases. Let's see what that means. If you start walking on this path, let's call this point A and this point B and if you start walking from here and you go all the way up to there and let's call this distance 10 meter and then you return back, you come back 2 meters and if I ask you what is your distance then find the length of the path traveled and so distance will be 10 plus 2 equal to 12 meter. Now how about the displacement? 
So for displacement, you will take a look at the initial and final points. So your initial point is here and the final point is at this location and the distance and the separation between these two points is 10 minus 2, 8 meter. So when you were at B, your displacement was 10 meter and when you are at F, after some time, your displacement is 8 meter. So that means that displacement on the other hand can increase or decrease even be 0 or negative. So these are the differences between distance and displacement. In the next video, we will take some examples to calculate distance and displacement. See you.